All right, YouTube, welcome. Today we're gonna learn how to properly set the EQs on your head unit. Far too often, I see people using the factory inputs and I tell you what, they're cutting their system short because it's not optimized to sound its best. So in this video, you're gonna learn how to set it like a pro. Let's get loud, people. All right, YouTube, hope you're all having a great day. If you're new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe down below and make sure to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any updates on how to take it to the next level. EQ or equalizer settings basically determine what you hear and how loud you hear it. There are different types of EQs, but the most common on aftermarket head units are graphic equalizers like this one here. <laughs> if you are using a preamp style equalizer such as these, this video also applies and will help you optimize it. So in this video, we are going to focus on setting your EQs up to make your system really shine. Before we get started, I wanna preface this by saying that at the end of the day, it really depends on your personal preference and how you want your music to sound, okay? There is no right or wrong way per se how to set it as you want it to sound good to you. You're the one that's gonna be sitting in your car the most, so you're the one that needs to be happy with how it sounds. However, there is an optimized way to set up your EQ to give it the best output that plays how your ears actually process different frequencies throughout the spectrum. So different head units and different preamps all have different configurations as to how many bands are available to adjust and how many dBs you can raise or attenuate the frequency and so on and so forth. But the concept of how to adjust them are all the same. Adjusting up increases the loudness of the specific frequency X amount of dBs. Likewise, adjusting down decreases the loudness of that specific frequency X amount of dB. Get it? As you can see on my head unit here, I have quite a few bands I can adjust to really dial in what I want. Now that we got that covered, let's move on to the next topic. So the human ear can hear frequencies between 20 Hertz and 20,000 Hertz. Anything below or anything above that is not audible to the human ear. It's also important to note that the ear can hear frequencies in the middle of the spectrum better than the frequencies at the extreme ends, okay? So you are going to play off that concept to best optimize your EQ. Traditional thinking would suggest that if the human ear can pick up mid-range frequencies the best, then we should boost those frequencies and attenuate or reduce the lows and highs, creating a hill shape, as you can see in the example here across the spectrum. Well, that is the exact opposite of what you should do, and here's why. Your ears can already hear mid-range frequencies the best, so no need to boost them. What you need to do is to create what is known as the smiley face EQ, which looks something like this. This will give you the brightest and most vivid output that your ears will enjoy and actually sound very balanced as you are boosting the frequencies that your ears have a harder time hearing. If you set your EQ settings flat or at zero dB across the board, something like this, it will sound just that, flat, and you will hear an abundance of mid-range with very little emphasis on the higher spectrum treble and the lower end bass. Adjusting the EQ bands so that the lower end of the spectrum and the higher end of the spectrum are raised, creating a smiley face curve, will give you a more natural curve to what your ears need to hear to sound balanced. After you have adjusted your EQ to a smiley face pattern, now you can fine tune and adjust to your personal taste. But most importantly, you now have the framework of how your EQ curve should look. Everything you fine tune and adjust after that is now just simply personal preference. In my specific setup, I have my subwoofers, my mid ranges, and my tweeters all on their own level control knobs so that I can attenuate the gain on the fly if I want more or less of them. For example, I love having crisp ear piercing tweets when I play and listen to my tunes. If I have passengers that are not used to having four amplified three inch super tweeters pointing at their face, I can attenuate the gain of my tweeters by adjusting the remote knob without having to go into my EQs and mess with the frequencies. So another setting on your head unit worth mentioning is the loudness setting. 
Some units you can simply turn it off and on. Some units you can adjust it low, medium, and high, so on and so forth, okay? My recommendation is if you need to use the loudness setting, then in all honesty, you need to upgrade your system. Plain and simple, for real. If you have a stock system with factory speakers and minimal adjustability of your EQ, then loudness has its place as it typically boosts the low and high range frequencies, specifically at lower volumes to brighten up your music. This is absolutely unnecessary if you properly set up your EQ as previously explained, and absurdly unnecessary if you have aftermarket amps and speakers and a decent head unit and or preamp with EQ adjustability, okay? Consider the loudness setting a shortcut to get better sound out of a subpar system. We all know that shortcuts don't always give you the best result. Well guys, I hope this video helped add value to those that watched. If it did, please make sure to like this video, subscribe below, and turn on those notifications for future videos. Let's get loud, people.